Hello guys, thanks for tuning in. So for this video, we're going to build a REST API using BAN, which is the fastest JavaScript framework out now, and Elisha.js, a fast web framework that is optimized for BAN. We're also going to use Prisma as our database ORM to interact with an SQL database. The database will be hosted on PlanetScale, a managed database cloud hosting service. This looks like there's going to be a handful of things to unpack, but don't worry. There's a method to all this madness, and as we go through all these, I'll try to explain why I use this setup. For the API, we're going to recreate part of this IMDB search API. We'll also have browsable docs like this that you can view on the browser. This is going to be a fun build. If you haven't already, you can install burn by running this install command in your terminal. This downloads the burn install script and runs it. Let's then set up Elisha by running burn create Elisha command. This will scaffold a fully set up app for us. A server has already been set up for us in src index.ts that's listening on port 3000. It has a get root that returns a text string. We can start this server by running the burn run dev command. This is just burn run with the hot option for automatic server reloading on file change. For quick testing of the HTTP requests, we are going to use the REST client VS Code extension which allows us to send and view requests inside of VS Code. To set it up, we create a new blank file, set the language mode to HTTP, type the URL of the request and then click the send request button. You can see the full HTTP response on the right tab. Let's go ahead and create the API routes for a movie search API. Here's the list of routes that I think we need for this. We want to support searching for movies, series, episodes, cast members and awards. We also want a path to get an individual movie and all its casts episodes or awards. Let's start by creating the search path. This will be a get root with two parameters, the path and the callback function. We want to access the search query from the query string. We do so via the query parameter, which is an object of all the query strings of the URL. Let's get the search string from the queue query string and return it for now. Let's also add the rest of the paths where we also just return the query string. For the paths that need parameters, like getting a movie title by ID, we add a get root just as we did earlier. And for the ID parameter, we add a colon and then ID. To get this in the callback function, we use the params object and then get the ID from it. Let's do the same for the other paths. Now that we have created all the paths, we can quickly test the API. For example, we can search for the Creed movie and it will return the text response as expected. We can also get that title by ID and it will also return a response. Before we continue, there's another way we can improve our API paths here to reduce a lot of the repetition and make them more readable. For the search paths, for example, you can see that the search prefix is always the same. We can make this cleaner by creating a search group via the dot group method. We can then move all the search routes to inside this group and then remove the search keywords. So by looking at this, you can clearly see all the entities you can search by. Let's also create a group for the title by ID paths. Move over all the title paths to this group and remove the repetition. Another great feature that Elisha has is strict type checking of API parameters. We can control exactly what parameters are accepted by our API and which values they return. Currently, we can call the search route without the queue query parameter and it will still run with no error returning undefined as the value. We can make the queue parameter compulsory by using schema guards. So in the search group, we add a guard with an object containing the schema and then add the query object that will contain this group's queries. To describe the shape of this object, we use the inbuilt schema builder, which is called T, to add an object with a queue parameter. We then move the rest of the path into the guard as a second parameter. With this, you can't search without the queue parameter. If you try to, you'll get a 400 bad request with this message as a response. With that done, let's set up the database and start returning some real data. Let's first install Prisma by running burn add Prisma. We want to use MySQL as our data source, so we can initialize Prisma with it via burn x prisma init command with the data source provider set to MySQL. This will generate a schema.prisma file for us. You can see there is some configuration already set up for us, like the data source provider. Let's go ahead and set up our database on planet scale. Once we've created a planet scale account, we'll be redirected to this page where we'll click the create link here to create a new database. We can call the database movies and then click create database. Next, we need the database connection string. We can click the connect link and then choose Prisma as our connection option and click the copy button to copy the link to our clipboard. In the .end file that's also generated by Prisma, we then paste the copy text in place of the database URL text. Before we move to the next step, let me skip ahead a bit. We will run the Prisma migrations via ban x Prisma migrate dev command. If we run this, you'll see a 
Prisma Migrate could not create the shadow database error message. When Prisma is running the database migrations in a dev environment, it creates another database next to your real database, which it calls a shadow database and uses it internally. Planet Scale doesn't allow creating databases by running the create database command, so the migration fails. We can fix this by creating another database branch on Planet Scale. Let's call this shadow. After it completes initialization, we click connect and then copy the connection string. We then paste the text in the .n file and change the key to shadow database URL. We can then set a shadow database URL config option in schema.prisma and set it to the shadow database URL env variable. Prisma will now use this as the database instead of creating a new one. Let's go back to the database setup and create the models. The most important model in our database will be the movie model. This will have the ID, title, year, genre, poster, created at, base fields. A movie can have many cast members. Let's call them a person model. It can also have multiple reviews, awards, and episodes if the type field is set to series. With this, we can create the relations we just described. The person model will have an ID, name, age, type, and bio. A person can also have many awards and can act in many movies. A review has a rating and a comment. It belongs to a movie, so we add a relation with a movie ID as the foreign key pointing to the ID of the movie model. An award has an ID, a name, and a year. It can be given to a person, so we add a relation to person with person ID as the foreign key. Since a movie can have awards too, we can add a movie ID foreign key. We need to add the movie ID and person ID fields for this. Lastly, an episode has an ID, a title, year, and poster. It belongs to a movie, so we add a foreign key to the movie model called movie ID. With that, we are done with creating the models you need. Oh, and just in case the person's biotext is too long, let's make the file type to text where at db.txt. Let's also do the same for the review comment. We can generate migrations for these models and create the tables automatically by running ban x prisma migrate dev and call the migration name init. Let's give the migration a second to run. Looks like the migration has failed again, and it's another planet scale issue. They do not allow foreign keys in the database schema. There's two technical reasons why they don't, but we won't go into that. There's a way to resolve this. There's a relation mode option in the database config, which if set to Prisma, ensures that foreign keys don't show up in the database migrations. If we scroll down to the relations, we'll see a hint that suggests adding indexes for all the foreign keys to avoid performance hits when accessing the fields. So let's add the indexes for movie ID in review model, movie ID in person ID in award model, and movie ID in episode model. Let's remove the failing generated migrations and then retry running the Prisma migrate dev script. It runs successfully this time round. If you look inside the migrations folder, you'll see a migration.sql file populated with all these SQL queries. Our next step is populating the database with real data. For this, we need to create a seed script that will add movie data to our database. Let's add it in scripts seed.ts file. First, let's import the Prisma client class and initialize it. We can add a main function that we can run directly at the bottom of the file. If it runs successfully, we close the database connection. If it fails, we print the error and still close the database connection. For the seed data, I've added some dummy data for directors, cast members, reviews, awards, series, episodes, all attached to the movies. Prisma has a very clean API that makes populating data and adding relations a breeze. I think this should be enough data to test our API with. To populate our database with this data, we add a Prisma key in the package.json config with a seed key whose value is the command we'll use to run the file. For our case, it's burn scripts seed.ts. We can then seed the database by running burn x prisma db seed. Again, this fails silently. Burn is unable to run our script because of an async hooks feature it hasn't implemented yet. We have no choice but to run it another way. The easiest way I figured out was to rename the script from .ts to .js, change the seed script from using burn to using node, and then finally change the import statements in the seed.js file to use require statements instead. If we run the same command after the changes, the seed script is executed successfully. Now that our table is set up with real data, let's update the API path to return real data. The first order of business will be to figure out how to access our database from inside all the paths. There's a couple of ways to do this. We can initialize the Prisma client at the top of the file like this and then call it inside the callbacks to query the data. This is acceptable if all our application logic lives in one file. 
Sometimes we might want to share the app instance across multiple files or modules, which means we need to initialize the Prisma instance every time we want to query the database. There's a much cleaner way. We can create a plugin called setup and set a variable via decorate whose value is the Prisma instance. We can then apply this plugin to our app instance via dot use function. With this, the DB variable will be automatically passed to all the callbacks of the parts function. We can then query the database via db.movie.findMenu. Notice that the types are automatically inferred too. Also, since we don't need the query string when getting all the movies, we can move the path to outside of the guard. Let's try and check if the movies are returned via the API. Looks like the search request is sent successfully, but it's returning an empty object instead of the list of movies. Maybe the response is being sent back before the find many promise is resolved. Let's make the function a sync and then try again. We made it worse, no response is being sent back this time, and the server exits because of the async hooks error again. Okay, let's try another way. The Prisma module also supports a data proxy feature, which is powered by the Prisma platform. This is used for edge runtimes and is therefore optimized to make data querying faster through connection pooling and minimizing of database connections. It comes with some extra setup steps though. To use the data proxy, we need to create a Prisma account and then create a new project. In the connection string text box, we need to paste the connection string of our database. This is the value of the database URL and variable that we set earlier. Let's then click create project and wait for Prisma to generate the proxy. Once done, we need to scroll down and click the create a new connection string button. We can call it movies db and then click create. Once done, we copy the generated string and then replace the database URL environment variable with that connection string. Lastly, we need to generate the client for the data proxy by running ban x prisma generate data proxy. This will generate the extra edge runtime that we want. We can then change our client to use the edge runtime. And just like that, with a little effort of course, the API now returns data. This seems harder than it should be though. It took me a while just googling through issues to finally create this setup that works. With the API working, let's fill in the rest of the API paths. For the search pages with a query, we'll perform a Prisma filter query. So for the movies path, we can call movies.findMany and then add a where clause to return results where the title contains the search query. For the TV search path, we want to search only movies with a TV show type, so we add the title where clause together with the type series filter. For the person search path, we'll return results where the name contains the search query. We didn't add any models for the company path, so let's just skip this for now. For the episode, we'll compare against the title too. For the review, we'll compare against the comment text, and finally, for the award, we'll compare against the award name. Also, since these callback return promises, make sure to explicitly add an async keyword to them or they won't return any data. For the title by ID group, we return an individual model. So for the root path, for example, we return the title with that ID via .movie.findUnique together with an ID where clause. The ID is a number, so that's why we cast the params.id string to a number. For the episodes, we return all the episodes for that movie via db.episodes.findMany and a where clause where movie ID matches the ID. For the cast members, the query will be a little different. A movie can have many cast members, and cast members can belong to multiple movies. So in the where clause, we add a movie's key with a sum property whose value is an object with an ID key and the value is the params.id. This should fetch all the cast members that belong to this movie. For the reviews, we also get the reviews where movie ID equals to params.id. And finally, for the awards, we return all the awards where the movie ID equals params.id. Little part of me dies every time I have to explicitly mark the callback function as a sync for the data fetching to work correctly. It's very easy to forget this. All our API paths should now return data as expected. You can search for movies, cast members, and even episodes. You can also get an individual movie, its cast members, or even its awards. Our next step is having a web interface where we can browse all the API paths you support and test them instead of manually typing the paths like you have been doing. We are going to use Swagger UI for this. Lucky for us, there is an Elisha plugin that automatically sets up Swagger UI for us. We can install it via ban add Elisha JS Swagger, import the plugin and add it to our app via app.use Swagger. We can configure the website path to point to v1 Swagger. TypeScript shows an error message when using this plugin and I didn't figure out how to make it go away. It doesn't break anything though. If you visit the v1 swagger path in the browser, you'll see all the documentation generated for us. You can test the path directly from this page and even preview the pretty printed API response data. With this, our API is now complete. Honestly, I didn't expect setting up the app to be this complicated with Burn, but I'm glad we got the app working. Let's hope that it's going to get easier as Burn becomes more stable. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and want to see more.